everybody uh, listening in from home and watching from home. You can't see me, but my name is Silke. I work at New Zealand Musician Magazine. And uh, with me right now is Kieran McMeekin. He's live here in our office at New Zealand Musician in downtown Auckland. Um, in our downstairs office today because that's where the heater is. <laughs> we just released a single, That Feeling, that came out last week. And we invited him up for a live stream. Hello. Hello. It's Hello, everyone at home. It's and good. yes, it is very cosy in here. So it is very cosy, nice isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, uh, it's just before, I was kind of sitting next to the heater all the time. It was great. Yes. Um, okay, um, we've got a few questions for you, and you're going to answer um, the audience's question, awesome. if, uh, or the viewer's questions, if they've got any. And you've got your guitar here, so you're probably going to play us a song or two as well. Yes. Very, yeah, very lucky. Stick around, um, uh, good people at home. Now, um, you recently completed, or recently, well, was it last year, you completed a European writing tour, collaborating with other songwriters in the yes. UK and the Netherlands. Who did they match you up with? Uh, so, I met up with 17 songwriters uh, over the space of five weeks, which was amazingly hectic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, one of the best experience of, experiences of my life. It was just awesome. I met up with... Uh, Sasha Skarbek, who was at the APRA Song Hubs mm -hmm. uh, the, first, the first year. Um, a lady called Karen Paul, who I think is coming to the next one. Cool. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> I said nothing. <laughs> and uh, who else? Uh, a band called Soul Searching. We wrote a song that's on the album together. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just a bunch of other awesome songwriters. And yeah, it was a wonderful trip. Wrote 39 songs, and oh my God. most of them were will never hear the light of day ever. <laughs> they're in a deep, <laughs> they're in a deep corner of Dropbox, <laughs> and five of them ended up making the album. So, yeah, it's not too bad when you think how many songs some other people write and how many actually make it. Yeah, it's not too not too bad. Because that's isn't that what they say? Um, you should write a lot of songs and yep. then take the best ones. And some people just write 10 songs, and these are the 10 songs for the yeah. album. And then the album may not be. Up there? Yeah, that, I mean that's what I used to do. I used to just think that every song that I wrote was my song, you know, and that, that, that would be my song that I play and stuff. But I was really encouraged probably a couple of years ago now to really expand that and, and get out writing with other people and, and just, just really just keep writing, just keep keep writing. And, and that's definitely going to be my approach for the foreseeable future because it really, I really encourage that. Do you set yourself goals? about how many songs you need to write in a week or something like that? I don't in a week, but I've got myself goals of like how many songs I want to wrote, write every three month period. And it's that dance between like, I mean it's quite a logical thing to do, right? Mm. But creativity is not necessarily a logical <laughs> part of the brain. So it's like that dance between just get on doing some work and, and waiting for that. I'm not waiting, but just allowing for that natural mm. inspiration to come in, you know. So, um, at the moment, I'm I'm not writing an awful lot of songs, if I'm honest. I guess just being in this phase of getting everything ready for the album and, and stuff, it's just yeah. exercising this side of, side of my brain. But <laughs> it'll come. It'll come, and it comes in waves. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah. So. You told me how many songs you, you, you did. There was 37, you said. Um, 30, yeah, 39. But there were 15 total, I think. And how many are on the album? All, all 12. Up? Did you write the other ones all by yourself? I did. That's great. Most of them. Most, mm. uh, sorry. About half of them were co-writes and about half of them were just my own. How, how do you choose out of a pool like that? You just listen through them and you analyze yourself? Um, uh, which ones are the better ones, which ones aren't, or do you have two people who you bounce them back mm. to, and, and, and um, how do you how do you pick out of a huge lot of songs? Yeah, I mean most of them pick themselves, to be fair, mm. um, and we actually recorded 17, so we recorded 17 songs, and we had like a, a pool of about 20 that we were looking at, and mm. those the 20 picked themselves, because as I said, 30 of them are in a deep corner of Dropbox, so <laughs> see the lot of day, so 20 of them picked themselves, and then it was a it was a little tricky getting it down to 17 mm -hmm. and then from 17 to 12 that's when it to really like this is the album that was quite a hard process of like that was a bit of a dance you know some song i was like yeah from the beginning of the record i was like yeah this is this this is going to be the hit you know 
to then at the end of it being like this is not even going to be on the album you know just funny process recording mm. it really is it's, there's no rhyme or reason to it so that yeah that when it really comes to crunch time of picking the 12 songs it was, it was definitely a challenge but to answer your, I mean to really answer your question like you know when you, you listen to a song your own song and it's just like this is me you know it's, it's like mm. it's like putting on your favourite jacket you know and it's just like this is me you know and yeah so that the songs, the 12 songs, I, I feel are just a representation of me as a human and musician, you know. So there were songs that you didn't feel were you? Well, yeah, and okay, so there's another What, Give me an example of a song that wasn't you and why it wasn't you, maybe, if you can. Uh, there was a song... There was a song on there... Was it written gone? There was a song on their Momentum, All the Colour. Not necessarily not me, but the, okay. So yeah, there's another layer to that because then there's how the songs all intertwine with each other, and like an album really is like a bit of artwork when you when you go from the, the start through to the end. Like mm -hmm. especially not so much these days. I mean, people are still releasing albums, but people aren't really digesting albums like they used to. But my whole approach to this album was very old school in the sense, like very classic. Um, and working with Greg Haber, we, we had a really kind of old school approach to it, you know, where we got real musicians and playing real instruments, no like auto tune or any any editing as such. Like it was, they were real takes, and um, uh, yeah. So lost my train of thought. That's <laughs> fine. It actually kind of led towards one of my next questions, which was like when you when you first recorded your EP. Yes. Um, that was in a in a living room, in a farm or something yeah. like that. How does it, how, so you, now you did it at Roundhead yes. with musicians and I was just wondering, A, how does it compare? Yeah. <laughs> how, um, and who did you work with other than Greg? For this who's album. On your, who's, on your, who's on your album, music, the musicians in your band? Yes, yes, so um, Chris Rusco on drums, Aaron Prichter on guitar, Jesse Reeves on bass, uh, M Barsa on uh, piano, and uh, there, were a, there was a guy, Stephen Smalls, who came and played some Hammond, and there was a string quartet in the UK, and a brass duo mm. in the UK as well, that all got recorded over there, which was awesome. And uh, that's about it, that was, the, that was the unit. And I mean, going back to the Valley recording at the farmhouse in Awaka, <laughs> that was, I mean, that was awesome in its own right as well. Like, it was, Three, three mates that we went off into the absolute whops of Southland, you know, and went into this farmhouse and just set up and, and recorded an album over a week, you know, or recorded an EP over a week and it was magic, absolutely magic, you know, we recorded one song in a farmhouse, uh, sorry, in a um, wool shed, you know, it was just a whole different thing, but equally beautiful, like I, I've got such fond memories of that, equally as fond memories as, as the album, you know, it's just... Yeah, can you yeah. imagine that? I guess in the end, yes, it's nice to have nicer gear, but the people around you and yeah. the, just a friendly environment yeah. makes for the best experience, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, totally. And that I, that was my first like proper recording. You know, I, like that was really special for me and for us because we were all there was. I said three of us. We were very close to each other, very close to the songs, and we were all quite personally invested in it. You know, so it was a really special special thing. Before we get you to play play as one of the songs, mm. actually, um, so your brand new single, That Feeling, was co-written with Mozilla, yes. who worked with massive names like Miley Cyrus, One Direction, and it's got this really sweet video with, with real couples. How yeah. did you even find the couples for the video? Are they all your friends? Or? Well, okay, so interesting making that video because I actually made two videos prior to that that failed. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And the two videos were essentially the same thing, but a different edit of one another. But it was a whole big long process. And the re why I thought the video failed was because I thought the edit wasn't right. And then I got someone else to edit the footage, and it was all studio footage and live footage and stuff. And I thought conceptually that'd be really cool, but when I looked at watched it back, I was like, it's just not right. And and eventually I figured out why it wasn't right. It's because it was it was just a essentially footage of a bunch of guys in a studio which it was completely missing the essence of the song which for me is literally about 
new love, meeting someone and just falling in love with them. Mm. And when I was like, smack me in the face, I was like, duh, that's missing. So then we had to go back to the drawing board and make a whole new music video. And that was the concept that myself and the director, Ben, came up with and, and my team, um, J9. And we were just like, let's just get real couples in and just film them. You know, just film them being with one another and just it's super simple. But that's what the song's about, and it was just. How do you find couples? Well, I, okay, that's when it was like, okay, well, who do you, know, who do we know? And I was <laughs> like, I had this huge. I was just thinking of all the couples that I think are beautiful and in love, and you know, smushy. <laughs> <laughs> and I had this big list. Actually, it was like ten couples on there that I, and it was, they were the most beautiful conversations that I had because I literally called them up and I was be like, hey, it's Karen. Um, like I've got this music video, <laughs> and it's all about beautiful couples being in love and you are a beautiful couple in love and they were all like so taken back and and just that was that was such a nice conversation to have <laughs> oh, that's really cool and um yeah so two of the couples on there I ended up knowing really well they're really good friends of mine mm -hmm. um and then two of the couples were were we couldn't because availability and stuff we ended up getting a couple of other couples to come on and yeah be a part of it so it was cool cool yeah we see if we've got any questions See, Alexander Jones asks, when's the album dropping, bro? <laughs> hey, Alex. Album, I'm actually announcing it this week. Okay. I'm announcing it tomorrow. I thought, no, on Wednesday. Maybe I'm Jane, I mean, was, she may be watching. Maybe she could just say, hey, Jane, and is it okay for him to say so? Just send us a text. Or yeah, can I, I, can I say really early August? Sorry, if that's not okay. <laughs> Don't do it. Yeah, okay. early, okay. early August. <laughs> Cool. Well, uh, let's let's hear a song and then. Yes. Um, cool. So yeah, I'm gonna play uh, this new single. Before you get started, actually, better put the microphone to cardioid. Cardioid. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna play this new single, that feeling. I'm gonna do a bit of a chill, kind of down, down tempo version of it. So I hope you enjoy it.
it Don't you stop giving me this feeling I need More than you think Keep on giving me this feeling I take it any way, shape, or form It makes me feel incredible important to me to be heard as well because yes. my ego is just massive but it's okay. <laughs> uh, quite a few people listening right now um, awesome. and we've got um, James Walter says what a tune oh yo Jimmy <laughs> and Jenna says ah tell him it's cool she says oh awesome and uh, Angel sends little love hearts oh uh, yep lots well, of love hearts going angel. across the screen it's, it's quite nice actually you should yeah. see it it's like really <laughs> <laughs> yes so this, this is a new single Yes. And that's the one that we mentioned before that was written with Mozilla. Yes. I, I'm wondering, when you when you write with somebody like that, that must be somewhat intimidating, right? How do they do they ease you into it? Do, how do you get even get started? Is there a process to writing with other people with immense successes? No. Nah. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I... I no, nah, it's all about the song. Like, it doesn't matter. Just, and, and it's a human being, like... That's the whole thing of songwriting. It's like if you're going to go co-write with someone, you're writing with a human being. Connect with that person, you know. Mm. And at that that song was an interesting one because I wrote that at, as I mentioned earlier, the Song Hubs, 2016, and it came about right at the end of the of the um, the course or the the week, and we had these 20 minute. Uh, set like mentor sessions with with mm. someone like Mose we had Mosella and Sasha Skarbek and um, I can't remember the other writer. It's horrible. <laughs> um, anyway, and we had these mentoring sessions, and my mentoring session was with Mosella, and we had you know a twenty minute chat to talk about our lives and what we're doing and our careers and stuff. And to be honest, I was like, I was like, I don't really want to talk about that. <laughs> you know, like wh what am I going to go in and get a little bit of advice maybe, and that, that's cool, but. I would much rather see if I can go in there and write a song with her and just learn what it, you know, just take whatever I can from that interaction, you know? And yeah, I just, it was like nine o'clock in the morning and she sort of came in and she was like having some coffee and yawning and, and I was like, hey, <laughs> and had my guitar and she was like, you know, so tell me about your life. And I was like, no way, like, let's write a song. And I just had those chords. I had a couple of little melodies, and before you know it, we were like, so like "No, stop! Give me that feeling." Just singing along, and and this the sort of bones of a song started forming. But it, as I said, it was only twenty minutes, so then I jumped out, and, and I spent the next two weeks working on the song. And, and yeah. so, so what would you say is her contribution? Because I'm sorry if I'm asking such. A, I've just been wondering if you write a song with somebody else, your your especially your songs that come from such an emotional. Yeah. Um, a background, then that would think you'd think you're vulnerable and you don't want to be criticized about stuff or yep. whatever. Um, and then you've got somebody else just sort of chiming in. How much of that song is was her idea? What what did she bring to your song? Well, if I'm totally honest, and she'll, this is what happened. Like she, mm. I had the the some words, some a couple of lyrics. I had a melody for the verse, and then she came in and she was just kind of like. Bum, ba, da, da, bum, ba, and I came up with this melody line mm. and then and then she came up with that chorus line don't stop giving me that feeling and, and I was like cool like, I thought it was a little cheesy for a start and I was like I didn't really think much of it but when I took it away and I started and this is what I do like when I 
really get on an idea, I'll spend days, weeks, like really crafting these lyrics and, and crafting a story. And mm. I really got into the song. And, and yeah, I just wrote, I wrote the song that I, that I, I love, I loved, still love. Um, but, it, but I spent, I mean, yeah, thanks. <laughs> That's Mozella. <laughs> I spent two weeks like crafting the song, you know, and, and some might say Mozilla was there for 20 minutes, but like without her there, the song would never have been born and the song wouldn't be anything of what it is. So it's like, to me, when I go into writing situations, generally, it's just a, it's a, a, an even split, you know, mm. no matter who does what, like it's, mm. it's really important that that's honored, you know, because yeah. it gives everyone an equal equal input um, mm. and equal if people you know people would, would wouldn't reserve anything if it's just like yeah let's we're in this together like let's make this song as good as we can and and there's no like crap that comes on later you know so people humans can get pretty catty so you don't want to so that's how bands break apart yeah isn't it? yeah it is and of what percentages I know isn't that tragic well, I guess it's humans. Yeah. yeah, that's just how it goes. Yeah. So the Nashville rules, they that's whoever's in the room. Mm -hmm. So, as as an equal split. So if you know if there were four people in this room and we all started to write a song, it would just be split four ways. You know. Mm. And there's kind of like jokes that run around Nashville of like if someone comes in and drops a coffee off or something, <laughs> they're technically entitled to. I didn't know about that. Song. I have to look that up. But th it makes sense to me because even just by being present sometimes and, and, um, and, and agreeing that that is a good idea on, or shaking your head, you do influence yeah, what the song will be like in the end, you know, hugely. just by um, subtle dismay <laughs> or whatever it is, yeah. Yeah, hugely, you know, mm. and, and someone, someone say, as you say, someone disagreeing with someone, something mm. is, is just as powerful as putting a lyric in, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's a, it is a fascinating process that Song, mm. songwriting process but also co-writing process. Yeah, I think there are not that many Kiwis who were in a, in a lucky enough position to be sent overseas to work with them and, and I think it's, it's, it's amazing, it's a great opportunity. It's such an amazing opportunity, yeah. you know, and I, and I didn't take that lightly, I was well aware of that, like when, when I was doing it I was like, man, this is such a, such a privilege to get the opportunity to go and, and yeah, go songwriting for five weeks with all these artists overseas. Were you allowed to put in requests? Songwriters? Um, no, I was just like, <laughs> no. I mean, the the contact, like the, the songwriters, came from Greg Haver. He he had a bunch of people, just people that he'd worked with over the years. Yeah. Just like, just you know, yeah. musicians just like me that live over in London, and that, and and we just got together and wrote songs. You know, it was, oh, it sounds it was like awesome. a dream. It was a dream. Sounds it really like was. Yes, you got a comment. I just see that uh, was during the song. Jesse says. I like the rhythm change in the bridge. Jesse. Jesse Reeves. Ah, Jesse, he's the bass player in my band. Yo, Jess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I really like the bass that you couldn't hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Um, now, what, what does the future hold? Obviously, there's an album, uh, which we're allowed to say will be out in uh, early August. Yeah. And, um, and, and what's next? After the album? Yeah, or just in the next little while, you know? Yeah, what's your so next, I, what's your three month plan? Yeah, three month plan? Well, I just finalized the last venue for a. Oh, I can't say this anyway. <laughs> oh, hey, Jenna, if you're still listening. Yeah. <laughs> Bugger uh, Just finalized the last venue for a tour uh, today, so there's mm -hmm. going to be a tour. Mm -hmm. uh, early August as well. <laughs> <laughs> How appropriate. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, countrywide or mostly uh, North Island? Yeah, countrywide. Nice. Yeah. So really excited about that. So the band and I will be in the studio practicing a lot, rehearsing. Um, and then, yeah, like that's been a, a big shift for me in the last couple of couple of months. Is just that I really, I really just want to get out there and play. So I'm just going to keep booking. It's been booking. a while, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. And mm. I, I think I've just I don't know what why, really. I think it's life. Life, yeah. But I've kind of I don't know. The writing process and the recording and stuff, and then I had a bit, I did have a bit of a break as well. Just the, the last three, four years has been quite crazy. So just having a bit of a break and then realizing I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? I need to I need to get back in the game, play. I just want to book shows and get back doing some writing. 
for uh, you know whatever the next album looks like and and yeah we're like looking at getting some stuff locked in for summer so yeah yeah it's gonna be busy busy cool so let's repeat for the good people at home there's a new single out that feeling yes you are Kieran McMeekin yes should we spell it or is that stupid to <laughs> I didn't know I th I was just doing so this course over the weekend and I had a name tag and I was like, oh. it was so helpful because most people don't know how to say it or spell it. Well, I guess if people are watching, they will be watching via Facebook where it actually says your full name and it's oh, linked awesome. in there. So if you don't like uh, Kieran's uh, Facebook page yet, you can do that there. There's also a website that is... Yeah, just KieranMcMeekin.com. Dot com. Dot com. I wasn't yep. sure about the dot com, what I put it in there. And um, check out the video with um, actual real loving couples. Yes. Beautiful. Do you want to play us a song as a lead out? Yes, I'd love to. That would be wonderful. And perfect lead out song because this, this is going to be the last song on the album as well. Ah. So yeah. Yes. Thank you so much for coming in. Oh, thanks for having me, Silka. It's a pleasure having you. Yeah, pleasure being Let here. Let me just uh, quickly do the hold. Yes. So this is a song called Spanish Steps.
before Climb those many steps I let you know And how long does it take to get to Rome When I climb those Spanish steps I let you know